Hello again, Cons, and we've got another episode of Connie's meme builds. Today I'm going to be talking about a healer build that I sort of put together. Now I'm not much for healer builds, so I didn't want to make one that was just strictly entirely healing. So it's kind of a weird compromise between DPS and healing skills. Uh, I'll try and make this quick, so we'll get straight into it. Let's have a look at the horn first. I am using hunting horn. You don't have to, but the buffs are really nice, and I do like hunting horn. That, that said, it, it really is up to you. Uh, I have it augmented with affinity and element up. I don't really bother with health augments on these sets because you're going to be healing so much anyway. There's not really any need. You'll almost always be at full health. Uh, and the songs. We have attack up large. We have defense up large. We have wind pressure negate. And we also have the stamina up echo wave song. Uh, a wonderful selection of songs. And especially anybody who uses stamina management will, will be quite thankful. Um, yeah, it's, it's, all the, it's all the standard stuff. The weapon itself has a nice chunk of white sharpness, which means I don't need to run handicraft. It has no base affinity, but with the 10% affinity from the augment, and from the points of critical eye that we run, and from the 10% bonus from agitator, we get to 40%, and then weakness exploit takes that up to 90 when it's tenderized. So you're roughly at nearly 100% affinity, it's close enough. The weapon has unawoken paralysis on it, as you can see we're at 160 because of the one release decoration. I have the other two release decorations on the glider mantle. Because the mantle lasts 180 seconds, basically just constantly active. So you have a good amount of paralysis. So the idea is you use your buffs to buff you and your teammate to increase DPS and survivability. You use the fact that you do KO damage to get a KO. You use the fact that you've got paralysis to get a paralysis. And overall, you just try and do a decent amount of DPS whilst also being of as much utility to your team as you can and also healing them if you see things getting dire. So the skills themselves, we've already kind of talked about this, we have Critical Eye and Agitator to get us up to 40% affinity, and we have Weakness Exploit to get that up to 90. We have Attack Boost and also Agitator for some raw. Now, notice we're using Tigrex Essence, the set bonus from 3 points of Tigrex. I happen to be using Brute Tiki because it's better. Uh, that allows you to a sort of awaken free meal, get it up to level 3, break the limit on that, which means that it activates 75% of the time. And what that does is it means that essentially your items will last four times as long. They'll only be consumed a quarter of the time, which is pretty crazy actually. Those 10 mega potions that you brought with you will last you the equivalent of 40. So you barely even need to bring combines. Now aside from the DPS skills, we have quick sheath so you can sheath up and heal your teammates quickly if you need to. We have free meal as we explained, speed eating, pretty self-explanatory, wide range obviously. We also have two points of horn maestro. The thing about Hunting Horn is you've kind of got to divvy up your time between doing DPS and keeping up your songs. And then focusing on healing and buffing your teams with items is like a third thing that you need to do, which is quite complicated. I think Horn Maestro is almost essential for this set if you're playing Horn. Just because it means you can focus a little bit less on song upkeep and a little bit more on all the other things you have to be doing. Aside from that, I guess we should talk about the level 4 decos. You can always swap out Quick Sheath for some points of Expert if you don't have the Expert plus 4 and drop that down. Like same thing with Horn Maestro, uh, again with Sheath slash Expert. And regarding these two skills on the Glider Mantle, the Tool Specialist is nice but you don't really need it. It just means you can Evasion Mantle more. And that's really not a huge deal so feel free to drop these down to regular release jewels. So yeah, as with all my builds I try to make it as accessible as possible even if you don't have crazy level 4 decoration. And I think that about covers everything, aside from the item set, so let's have a look at that. Uh, we bring all the standard items for sort of buffing yourself and like cold and hot drinks or whatever. Obviously, you know, the standard items you can mess around with based on what you're fighting. But then in terms of buffing, we bring herbal medicines for poison. We bring might pills for whenever a monster gets sort of clawed or knocked down, you can quickly buff your teammates with a might pill each, which is kind of crazy. We have null berries for curing things like ice blight. We have some combines for mega potions. You can bring combines for other items too if you need to, it's really up to you. You can also bring things like Estera Jerky for monsters that inflict bleed. If you play much healer then you know you know sort of what items to bring for which monsters. I'll have a look at the radial menu too just before we move on. We have a craft all mega potions at the top. Remember when you set your radial menu to craft you can select it to craft all at a time which is quite convenient. We have our mantles, we have our mega potions, and we have our three sort of utility items. As well as max potions for sort of emergencies. Hopefully you shouldn't need those though. 
And yeah, again, feel free to obviously change this to however you feel comfortable. It's just sort of a decent indication of what we're going for. Okay, so I will now cut to some gameplay, assuming I haven't already, of me being a good Samaritan in multiplayer. And we have our paralysis. <laughs> 